so I was just thinking, especially with uh, this generation and uh, this age group, and I have gone through that age, which all of you are in. Also, I have two children who are probably a little older than all of you. So I have seen what one goes through, the kind of crisis which happens at this stage. Who am I? What am I up to? What is it that I wish to be? What is it that where I want to see myself? These are all questions of identity. And sometimes we struggle through the times to find our identities. And as this is the best time to identify ourselves or be associated with certain ideas and make our own identity. The subject you gave me was identity. And when I started thinking about it, I said, okay, let me begin with my own life, my own experiences in life, and what I consider to be my identity. So one is born with an identity in the sense you have a surname, you're born to a family. And uh, as a child, your identity is associated with the identity of the parents you have. And that is identity is inherited and you're born with it. And some choose their identity. If you apply yourself, you'll come to know that how we choose our identity and some end up creating identity. So, so I mean, immediately my head goes to the uh, embodiment of uh, great strife and that was Ambedkar's life. So he created his identity. He wasn't born into a certain identifiable uh, characteristics, but he created his own identity. Some live for their identity because identity is such a strong thing that we live for our identities. Uh, I will not name people, but some people uh, who take a lot of pride in who they are, and that is living for an identity, and others die for the identity. Our soldiers at the border, our policemen, they die for their national identity. So identity in terms, one can look at identity as something which is always opposing ideas. And, and when we discuss identity, identity may mean many things to many people. And uh, thus many people choose their identity, as I said, and when we, it comes to choosing, that means there is an element of choice. And immediately for the present generation, the idea which comes into my mind is uh, LGBTQ that people may be born, they may have features of a male or they may have features of a female, but they may choose a different identity for themselves. So there's a certain element of choice. Uh, if we read Indian ethos and history, etc., we never had problems with this. Uh, if you read Mahabharata, you'll come across Arjun, who was a warrior king, but uh, became uh, a transgender for some time. There are people who are born as something and, and there are many, many examples of fluid identities, of fluid gender identity. So India has recognized it through the histories and uh, it's not a new concept for us, but uh, people who know us less will assign certain ideas to us because it's actually new for them because they're having different gender identities uh, would cause death penalty, unlike India, where people were accepted and uh, were made to live uh, for their identity, whatever their community allowed, and community exercises its own right uh, to choose uh, one's own identity. When I say some create their identity, and I immediately say by sheer dint of hard work, and so people may have different perspective, and I already gave an example of Ambedkar, for example. He wasn't born to be great, but he made himself great by sheer dint of hard work and the kind of labor and perspective he offered us on uh, so many uh, different things. Now, similarly, 
Mahatma Gandhi is known for his identity as Ahinsa, was his Parma Dharma, and, and that became his identity and his goal in life. And he identified himself with a particular idea and thus for peace and peace living, uh, a peace loving individual, that was his uh, identity. And when I say some die for their identity, of course, the example of our soldiers, et cetera. The other example from history, which comes to my mind is the identity of Bhagat Singh, who at a very, very young age, probably many of you may be close to his age, chose to die for this country. Now, when I uh, just uh, exposed uh, Bhagat Singh with say Mahatma Gandhi, both of them were identifying themselves and there was a commonality of purpose and that was nationalism and freeing India from uh, an imperialist power. But they both identified themselves with a different idea to achieve the same goal. So within the identity, there is a commonality of purpose. There's a commonality of goal, but different approaches. So there's a difference of method. And that is what difference in method identifies the two individuals we are talking about. The method itself makes an individual and, and makes an identity of that particular individual. So identity is an eight letter word, but identity is all about I. I with a capital I. And that capital I in identity is who I am, what I am up to, where I'm going to be, what I associate myself with, where my ideas flow from is all about identity. And that's what makes identity. Now, there's a common Western belief that Western philosophy is all about identity, a self, a self identity. And that concept is new to Indians and Indians do not uh, have idea about personal identity. Whereas this is completely incorrect because the classical philosophy which developed in India through the history and through out the Indian subcontinent from seventh century BC and earlier. So Vedas themselves put the question, aham, aham brahmasmi, to the idea of who I am is put in Vedas much, much, much before the Western philosophy even came forward. So identity of self and uh, how important self is or I is, is not new to us. In fact, it has existed throughout uh, the times of discovering ourselves. And, and I was uh, towards the end, your previous speaker was speaking to you that this is the age when you are all discovering yourself. You're all discovering who you are, what ideas you are attracted to, what you wish to be, where you want to see yourself. So this particular idea of self is the dominant prevailing idea and is prevailing at all times, my times, your times, or earlier times and future times also will remain a constant struggle for all human beings and people in the 20th century started identifying themselves with nationalities, with the uh, culture of countries. And on the basis of nationality, then there came a time, we all started identifying ourselves with isms, which is even today. And isms would mean socialism, communism, feminism, liberalism, leftist, right, and so on and so forth. So we are all identifying ourselves with some idea. And that idea could be an idea of politics, that idea could be uh, an idea of uh, a social organization, that idea could be an idea of uh, economics. So all these isms and uh, gender ideas is what we start associating ourselves with and becomes part of our identity. And the word identity will have multiple dimensions and, and different implications for different people at different times. Each person will have a, a kind of different identity. And I'm purposely taking my own example because it's easy to correlate with for all of you. So as a woman, uh, one, I'm a middle-aged woman. 
uh, um, uh, so gender is uh, that of a feminine. I'm a wife, so I'm Mr. Lakey's, uh, Aman Lakey's wife. Uh, I am a mother, so I have two children, Anirudh and Pranay. I'm a lawyer, that is my profession. I happened to uh, join a political party, so I became part of that political structure. I happen to contest elections and I am a public representative and elected MP. So, so that is kind of nature of what I perceive myself with. And all these ideas are encompassed in one individual. So one individual will have different layers of identities, one superimposed on the other to make that person complete. So while one may be a mother, a sister, a daughter, at the same time, uh, a lawyer, a politician, so from a free-flowing uh, layer to another free-flowing layer. And that is what makes a person's identity.